Uh, so yes, uh, my name's Sam Vaughan. I'm a postdoc at the University of Sydney, and I'm going to be talking to you today about some work I've been doing on stellar population gradients with the SAMI Galaxy Survey. Um, so yeah, so the stellar populations of galaxies contain a wealth of information. Stars really are the building blocks of galaxies, so we can learn about what's happened uh, over a galaxy's history by looking at the star's age and their chemical content. Furthermore, it's not just the central values which matter. Uh, gradients instead of population parameters tell us whether a galaxy was built from the inside out or the outside in. So we can end up distinguishing between different formation scenarios. So previous studies of the galaxy population as a whole have found really nice correlations between uh, structural properties like galaxy mass and galaxy size with their integrated stellar population parameters. And so whilst uh, kind of very focused studies of gradients, such as Julia's work, have been really useful in you know, looking into difference between centrals and satellites. If you look at the whole galaxy population in total, uh, previous studies have generally found that gradients tend to be a bit of a scatter plot. So that's why it's um, a really good time at the moment to use some of the um, great data that Sammy's collected and yeah, really kind of uh, look at this question with a really nice high quality, quality data set of many galaxies. So it's gonna give you a quick summary of how I measure my gradients. Um, this is an example SAMI uh, data cube. I've collapsed everything along the wavelength direction. So you can see the center of this galaxy is bright red here in the middle. So ideally what we'd love to do is to measure a stellar population in, in every single one of these pixels. It turns out that if you do that uh, towards the edge of your galaxy, you're really lacking in signal to noise. So what you have to do is combine lots of these things together, like so. And so from each one of these little um, bins here, each thing in a different color, I extract a spectrum. And then with that spectrum, I fit models to it. So you can see the data here in black, and then my uh, models I fit are in red. So you can see we get nice, quite a nice result along all of the spectrum. I'm also including emission lines in this fit. So that's the orange thing you can see around the HDR for wavelength. So here's a quick example of um, some of the data I've uh, collected and the analysis I've done. On the left, you can see a sandy galaxy with a nice um, blue star forming disc with something like a red older bulge in the middle. Uh, so you can see that we recover this in the age and metal histone alpha maps. So we get this old bulge surrounded by a younger disc and a high metal center surrounded by lower metal in the outskirts. So um, I've done this now for 2,700 galaxies in SAMI, which gives me 70,000 individual spectra from individual bins. About uh, eight or 900 of those galaxies don't really have enough spatial enough signal noise to make resolved measurements. So we just get one bin essentially, but I still have nearly 2000 galaxies where I have at least three bins, I think that's right. So details about my model, um, each model spectrum I have is called a simple stellar population. That means we just take a single uh, population of stars with a given metallicity and a given alpha abundance. And then I, we can evolve these stars to get a snapshot of what their spectrum would look like at a given age. So after one, three, five, ten billion years, things like that. So each model fit is a um, combination of all of my model spectra. I get a kind of weight for each spectra to say how important this spectrum is to the overall fit. I then take the weighted average of these values to find a single age and a single metallicity and a single alpha for each bin. You can imagine that the distribution of templates is something approaching a star formation history for each spectrum but you have, I have to um, con condense down my data from 70,000 star formation histories into 70,000 weighted values, weighted averages. And finally, um, I do get estimates of uncertainties for each parameter. Uh, this is from a, um, I use a uh, bootstrapping in order to get the uncertainties for a small subsample of my spectra, then make a model to predict the uncertainty and apply this model to the rest of my data. 
So the first thing to check is, am I getting sensible results? Um, so a simple thing to do is to take my 2D maps and condense them down into simple one-dimensional profiles. So just metallicity as a function of radius, for example. And then, yeah, see if I recover some known results. I should say here that I'm taking two approaches. So the first thing is to simply take each galaxy on its own and fit a straight line. So I get an intercept and a gradient. But I've also done something a little bit more technical, which is to build something called a hierarchical model. And this allows me to get really tight constraints on the galaxy population as a whole. I haven't really got time to go into too much detail here, uh, but the main idea is that galaxies uh, are generally similar to one another. And so we can use the constraints on the whole population to influence the priors on individual galaxy fits. Um, all of the data I'm going to, all the results I'm going to show you in a second uh, come from the simple standard fitting its galaxy individually model. Sorry, each, each of the fits I'm about to show you come from the hierarchical model. Um, but if I do the simple method, I get very similar results and essentially the same conclusions. So yeah, it's not my model uh, giving me the results you're about to see. Um, okay, so here's the uh, central metallicity on the mass size plane. So on the x-axis, I'm plotting the stellar mass, and the y-axis, I'm plotting RE, so the size of the galaxy, essentially. And all the points are colored by the central metallicity I measure, the, metal the metallicity at uh, R equals zero. I should say here that I'm not applying any smoothing. This is just the data I get from the fits. And you can see these dotted straight lines. These are lines of constant gravitational potential, or M on R. And this is discussed in some recent work by uh, Tani Baroni, uh, constant met uh, these lines are generally lines of constant metallicity. So you can see that I'm doing a pretty good job of recovering this result, especially at the high mass end. Um, we also get nice constraints on some more um, different relations. So on the left is the gradient in Z on H. That's the gradient in my straight line uh, plotted against stellar mass. And on the right, it's the central metallicity plotted against stellar mass. The points here are colored by their SAMI morphological classification. So sorry, their visual morphology with spirals in blue, ellipticals in red, and then S zeros and kind of in between things are plotted in yellow and orange. And as Claudia mentioned in one of her questions before in the chat, a cool thing to do here is to look at the, whether or not there's an offset in the central metallicity between centrals and satellites. So that's something that, yeah, I'm very keen to do, just haven't got around to at this, at this moment. Um, so yeah, finally, having looked at lots of this data, we can see that many galaxies really aren't well described by straight line fits, especially the high signal to noise ones. We can really see some galaxies like this one, where the metallicity follows one gradient in the center and then flattens off to a flatter gradient in the outskirts. So future work is also going to look into what we can learn about galaxies which um, yeah, aren't well described by simple straight lines. So yeah, I'm just going to... Um, quickly discuss my conclusions. So far, this is very much a work in progress. So hopefully stay tuned for some um, concrete results coming out soon. But stellar population gradients tell us about a galaxy's history. By using the full semi-sample and some fun statistical techniques, we end up with some of the tightest constraints on well-known stellar population relations. And finally, it's clear, as I've said, that some galaxies aren't well described by straight lines. So what can we learn by going beyond these simple linear gradients? So, yep, yeah, thanks very much for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions. All right, thank you, Sam. There is a question on the Q&A that I saw that was, oh, I thought there was a question from Per Mortal um, that might have been answered already. So the one that I just see now is from Luca. Um, he says, given that metallicity seems to be better correlated with surface density than mass, have you... Uh, throughout, have you thought of looking global and gradients trends as a function of surface density instead of mass? Um, yeah, definitely. So that's a very yeah um, interesting thing to look at. Um, not something I've done yet, but it's very easy to, it's very easy to make that plot, and so definitely something I'm going to look into. Mm -hmm.